All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Legal Tech Briefs, a Google Hangout on Air associated with the Business of Law blog. We conduct short interviews with legal technology about legal technologies and the management of law for both law firms and corporate legal departments. I am Frank Strong with the LexisNexis Software Solution Division, and today I am joined by Craig Baer, the founder of Optimal. That is a technology consulting firm that provides solutions to professional services businesses. Now, Craig is a LexisNexis certified independent consultant, and he has worked with law firms to implement uh, some of our tools, including PC Law and Time Matters. He also pens a blog on the Optimal website, and he sometimes publishes detailed tips uh, for how to use these tools, and that's how I found him. Craig, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right, let's get started. Let's give us a little background about you and about Optimal. All right, well, I uh, went to school and I wanted to be a lawyer. I got a degree in history and political science. You know, that's good for pretty much one thing. And I made the mistake of graduating a little bit early and working at a law firm as I was studying, um, you know, for the LSAT. And I decided I did not want to be a lawyer. Um, but it's kind of interesting because that law firm actually purchased PC Law. And they were like, well, you know, you're kind of nerdy and overweight, so can you set this up for us? And I had no idea what I was doing, but I finally figured it out. Um, and then I just installed PC Law for another law firm, and I've been doing that for 12 years now. Wow, that's fantastic. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, in some circles, the, the definition of practice management can be, almost be a religion, if you will. What is your definition of practice management? Right, yeah, and I mean, because everyone has a different different definition. So I look at it as really three things. So there is the front office that of practice management, and that's contacts, calendars, to-dos, a case file. There's the, the back office, which is time entries, expenses, trust accounting, creating a tax return. And then there's also this document management side which is managing my documents and my emails and being able to search through them. Um, and, and those, are, I, I believe, are the, really the three main points of any sort of practice management software. Okay, so you're really looking at things purely from a, um, a technology perspective rather than um, a business process. What, what do you, could you elaborate or drill down a little bit about what practice management means to you in the, terms of, in the context of software tools? Like actual like practice management software, like uh, so in my mind, like PC Law mm -hmm. is a front office software. It's a document management software, and then it's a back office software as well. So it's got the ability to create time entries, whether on your phone or on the computer. It's got the ability to manage your documents. It's got plugins there, so it covers all three of those things. So when, when someone asks me, you know, I'm looking for practice management software, I kind of ask them, you know what is your pain point, what doesn't work, and then I try to steer them in the right direction depending on what they're looking for. I mean, all these products have strengths and weaknesses. But I'm looking at actual software that you either use in the cloud or that you install on your computer, and there's, I mean, there's thousands of different pieces of software out there, kind of what fits the person. Right, sure. So you, uh, you know, obviously have um, some experience inside law firms working with these tools. There's an awful lot of free stuff available today. Uh, if it's Outlook, if it's Microsoft Excel, whatever the case might be, um, do you think that uh, practice management software is essential? Is it a necessity, or can a law firm get by without it? Well, no. I, I, well, I don't think a law firm can get by without it, especially if we talk about it as like the back office. So if you can't send out bills or accurately track time or manage your trust or IOLTA account, you'll be out of business. So in, in that aspect, you have to have one of those component, that component of back office. Um, and then, you know, there is there is stuff like Outlook out there, but Outlook is what we say, it's not matter-centric. So there's really no way of going into Outlook and saying, let me look at the Jones matter and then seeing all the contacts related to that, all the calendar events related to that, and all the to-dos. So that just, just wouldn't work. What I, what I traditionally see is that if you're starting a, a firm from scratch, you're going to install back office software first because you have to be able to run. From day one, when you start, you have to be able to send out a bill. You have to be able to track your time. You have to be able to track 
your expenses. So that gets put in first. So that's in there. And then we, after the firm has been established for a little bit, they'll look at practice management software. So they want to be able to efficiently manage their cases. And then as the firm grows in size and gets a little bigger, they'll look at putting the document management report into that. And so look, they might buy a piece of software that has all those capabilities into it, but they'll usually implement it in stages because it's, it's just a lot to do. So they'll, they'll implement this part first, with, and then this part, and then this part. But I mean, everyone has some form of practice management software. Right. OK, let me, um, so that's a great answer. Let me uh, throw a little curveball at you and ask about you know, generic business versus legal specific. So you know, you got to have some sort of tool to manage the operations, the financial aspects of, of your business, of your law firm, uh, which is a business. Do you have to have something legal specific, or can it be, you know, a QuickBooks or any of the any number of the popular accounting and uh, financial management tools on the market today? Um, all right. So I think QuickBooks gets to be a bad idea, um, and and the reason that because this is what I see happens is you start out a law firm. You hire a, a bookkeeper, or someone like that. That person hasn't passed the bar. You know they don't know any sort of the ethical obligations at all. You say just the lawyer goes, just take care of this. So in QuickBooks, there is no trust accounting. And I mean, you can Google. There's some white papers on how to set it up, but there is nothing in place that helps prevent malpractice. So and this isn't even like intentional. Like no one is doing anything. You know. They're not being deceptive here. They just don't know. And, and again, it's usually not the lawyer. So could you use QuickBooks or any of those those tools out there that are generic? I mean, they possibly you possibly could. You need to spend the time to try to get those to work. Or you could just buy a legal-specific software that understands what a trust account is and will just take care of it for you. So it will throw up a warning saying you can't do this because you're not allowed to do it. Yep, that a makes a lot self, of sense. Yeah, I mean, it's a little self-serving to me because that's what I do, but it's also pretty real. And if you look at people that get into problems with their trust accounting, um, they usually didn't have, so they're using, you know, you see people using stuff like Quicken for Home to try to run the, their business. I mean, it really doesn't work. And then there's also the reporting feature, especially if you're running a law firm and you're trying to be able to say, okay, well, I need to pay this person this much in salary, and then a bonus based on you know time collected. You can't, that report doesn't really exist in QuickBooks. It exists in a legal specific you know billing and accounting software like PC Law. All right. Okay. That that definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, let me uh, let me ask about cloud. So the, the tools that we've we've mentioned so far, the tools that you've written about in your blog, PC Law and Time Matters. Premise based, been around for a long time, robust development behind them. The cloud has really, the last few years, I mean, the cloud isn't new in the industry, but it's still fairly new to the legal industry. Uh, and it's really taken off um, the last year or so. We've seen survey data, we've conducted our own survey data um, that suggests that's true. So, what factors should a law firm consider whether they go with a cloud option or whether they go with a premise based solution? All right, well, there's a couple of things to look at. Um, it first goes to, if you're even buying software to begin with, what do you want to be able to do with that software? And if you're looking at a cloud-based solution, do you have the ability to do it? Um, so that's the first thing that you always have to do. That's not different no matter if it's on-premise or if it's in the cloud. Um, what does that software integrate? So what are you using right now? Are you using, um, for example, Microsoft 365? Or are you using Google Apps? Are you using Outlook? Or are you using Gmail? Will that integrate with the cloud-based solution that you're looking for? So, I mean, that's just standard stuff that you have to look at. Um, again, then how much is it going to cost? And that's the really easy part because it's going to cost a fixed amount and then just multiply that so it's going to cost this much this year. Um, and can you afford that? And, and the, the best thing about the cloud-based solutions, let's just say, is that it's really easy to test out to see if you like it because you can just get a trial and you can actually play around with it. Where if it's an on-premise one, um, you really can only get a demo. It's really really difficult to have someone set up like an on-premise software for you to actually test out and use. A lot easier than the cloud. Right. Sure. So let me uh, let me ask. I guess we'll we'll bring this to the close. Um, 
But you're, you, I mean, your company in particular, you specialize in, in PC law. Um, you've seen some posts on, on Time Matters. What, what is the value of engaging a, a certified independent consultant or CIC like you by a law firm just going out and, and purchasing, purchasing the software themselves and doing it themselves? Right. Well, there's a couple of things. The, the first is if you're starting out, um, we kind of hold your hand and help you figure out what you need and, and explain what you're looking for, and then we're going to try to match you with the best solution out there. And then we'll help you convert your data, we'll train your users, we'll install the software on your computers, um, and we'll kind of do the tech support, we're around, come back for additional training. So that's just if you're starting out will get you through that process of moving to a new piece of software. And then if you've been using that software for a while, we can definitely do some sort of process analysis on how you're using that software and figure out if there's anything we can do to make it more efficient and, and just reoccurring training as well. Sure. And I imagine you probably, you know, just when I've perused your posts, you have some very detailed and some very technical um, ideas. I imagine that comes just from sharing the experience. You gain some experience working with one law firm and you're able to apply that to others and show them how to use it. Yeah, I mean, to me, I think blogging is the easiest thing in the world because I just take like, a question a client asks me and I'm like, this is pretty relevant. I've gotten this question ten times, so I'll just write a quick post about it. So people, and it helps me too, you know, making sure that I have a uniform answer for certain things. Yeah, fantastic. Well, uh, Craig, that's about a wrap. Thank you uh, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And then uh, for everybody else, um, a recording of this show will obviously be posted to YouTube channel shortly. Um, and we'll put a summary of the discussion on the Business of Law blog. It's businessoflawblog.com. If you have ideas for topics or guests that you would like to see, please send us an email at blisssocial at LexisNexis.com. That's B-L-S-S, B-L-S, -S, Bliss Social, at LexisNexis.com. Or simply post a comment on YouTube or Google Plus, and we'll look into seeing if we can make it happen. In the meantime, this concludes this edition of Legal Tech Briefs, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks.